Welcome to the Harvard Art Museums and this evening's program, Corinne Vosmoot, The Speed of Painting. My name is Caitlin Howe, and I am a sophomore living in Courier House, and I concentrate in the history of art and architecture. I am a member of the Harvard Art Museum's student board and am delighted to welcome you to the museum on behalf of our student community. Please, now be sure to turn off your cell phones and to help us warmly welcome Lynette Roth, Daimler Curator of the Bush Reisinger Museum, who will introduce this evening's talk. Great, thank you. Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to this year's Bush Reisinger Museum Lecture. Uh, since it was established in 2005, this series has presented important speakers on topics of Central and Northern European art, and it is generously funded by the German Friends of the Bush Reisinger Museum. Over the course of the last year, in a series of changing installations, our contemporary gallery on level one has explored the theme of the built environment. While the term built encompasses the exterior of physical structures, it refers also to private interior spaces, to physical and phenomenological experience. An unprecedented refugee crisis, war, gentrification, political instability, poverty, environmental change, internet culture. These are just some of the factors that in recent years have disrupted established notions of the meaning, parameters, and function of personal, political, national, and civic space. Uh, Corinne Vosmuth's large-scale 2009 painting, 50 U-Bahn Heinrich Heine Straße, has been on prominent display in this gallery since March and central to our investigation of these issues in contemporary artistic practice. Vosmuth's subject, a busy intersection in Berlin, is an inherently public space. But as seen from the artist's studio, and we'll hear a lot more uh, from our speaker this evening, uh, it is also a deeply private one, one comprised of images collected over time. As the artist mentioned yesterday in conversation with students, for her, the act of painting slowly, using old masterly techniques and with Max Dörner's The Materials of the Artist at her side, hers is a response to the proliferation of images in our everyday lives. It is also an attempt to capture that which the iPhone cannot, the fleeting memory of the scene and experienced environment. As a painter, Vasmut is deeply invested in the relationship between the transient and the permanent. Her work reminds us that the built environment and its representation are historically in flux, challenging us to consider new ways of relating to the personal, uh, relating the personal to the public space. We are extremely grateful to Anne and Graham Gund for the generous gift of this painting to the Bush Reisinger Museum in honor of our director, Martha Tedeschi. This major work further strengthens our growing collection of art from the 21st century and complements recent acquisitions of work by Rebecca Horn, Wolfgang Tillmans, and Ulrich Wüst, acquisitions also supported by our German friends of the Bush Reisinger Museum. Born in Dortmund and raised in Argentina, Corinna Vasmuth studied at the Kunstakademie in Dusseldorf. She currently lives and works in Berlin, and teaches at the Staatliche Akademie der Bildenden Künste in Karlsruhe, Germany. Her work is featured in major museum collections and has been exhibited extensively in both Europe and the United States. Recent solo exhibitions include the Kunstmuseum Stuttgart, SCAD Museum of Art in Savannah, Georgia, and the Kunsthalle zu Kiel in Germany. Just a brief note uh, on this evening's program, in order to afford our speaker to uh, thoroughly cover her um, development and past and current projects, we're actually gonna forego any formal question and answer period, and so I appreciate uh, your understanding. I am thrilled and honored uh, to welcome Corinne Vosmuth uh, for this year's Bush Reisinger Museum Lecture. Uh, and ask her to please join us uh, at the podium. Please join me in welcoming Corinne Vasmut. 
Oh. Moment. Uh, thank you very much, Lynette, and thank you very much for coming. Sorry for my English. I try my best. I have a lot of uh, too much. I brought too much pictures with me because of my bad English. So I can show you a lot and I try to explain something. Um, I start with my first painting, I, the first painting of my inventory. And at, at the same time, it's the last painting I painted at the Academy in Düsseldorf. It was the year 1989 and I was 25 years old. And at this time in the 80s in Düsseldorf, overall was the um, ghost of Josef Beuys. And on one hand, we had Gerhard Richter teaching with conceptual painting or neo-conceptual art. We went to Konrad Fischer Gallery. And on the other uh, side, um, there was in Germany um, paintings called, called Neue Wilde Malerei. This was very bad, bad, bad painting, full of stains and blots and brush strokes and drippings and kneading with painting. And the painting was material to knead and thick. And they painted her painting, his, the guys painted the paintings and put it on the wall like trophies. And me, the same. Oh, wow, I'm so great. And I'm, I had the feel I got to a dead end road because it's always the same and then I have to make a break. And this was the, this painting. I took photographs from fire uh, because I was interested on the materiality with, because it's so difficult to paint. Then I choose these tiles from a Renaissance floor because it was so good with the tiles of the flames. And then I painted this. You can imagine at this time in Düsseldorf, all my friends, this is the painting, it's not so big, is 62 on 57 inch. And you can imagine all my friends and teachers and everyone um, saying, uh, this is not a painting. This is, uh, I feel it's too full. What do you want? But uh, for me, it was a painting experiment and um, there was no center, there was nothing. This was a, I was the rabbit making an experiment. What happens with me when I paint something like that? And this was a time long before a computer existed for us in the uh, end of the 80s in Germany. Um, like everyone at this time, um, I uh, collected a, a lot of photographs of print media, like this, for example, because of the painting, fire painting. Um, perhaps I would paint uh, a cloud painting or water, waterfall. I used uh, discarded sheets of paper or failed copies. I put stuff together. Perhaps I paint something with plants. And this was about bubbles. For sure, Gerhard Richter had his um, build atlas, but we didn't know it at this time. And everyone collected this, but my collection was very big. This is from pills. I put it into folders. And it was like a diary and playing with um, coincidences, how, how I found it. This was the folder Cosmos and Microcosmos. On the left, you have the folder War and Violence. On the right, you have Rooms and Cosmos. Even I collected my old cloth scraps with color or stupid ads. Everything was collected. And later, for me, it does, it, it is, collage wasn't art. It was like my hobby and like dealing with, uh, with um, öffentlich, 
public images and sampling and putting in them new in a new form together and later very later i showed them in exhibitions but more for the people to understand how i work and put stuff together we i have almo almost 3000 collage and i stopped doing doing them or oh, sorry my english I stopped doing it uh, at the year 2000. Here you have an example. I, had, uh, I got involved with the structure of lines and I had the idea to make a painting full of hair on the structure of hair and lines. So I collected these haircuts and very soon I discovered the haircuts from art history are more interesting or different. And then I went to the library of the Kunstakademie and I took photocopies from every single haircut I found and I put it into folder and I very methodical and I sorted them from ancient time, Babylon, Assur, As uh, uh, Babylon and Sumera until today and the idea was to paint a lot of haircuts on a rainbow and starting with white, blonde, brown and at, at the end painting the black hair. So this was the first step. I show it all to you so you see how I generally I work, how I do my paintings all with a huge preparation before. This is the first drawing of the haircuts. Second step, a detail. So this was the first drawing and I saw the, the stuff with the rainbow doesn't work in this way. It's too full. So I restarted again, I made these wigs, a lot of them, then I put them, photo, make photocopies, then I put them again together and I have these results on the right. And here you have a detail more close. And I, this was the result, this was the blonde, dark blonde hair and um, the size is 110 on 66 by 66 inch and this painting was from 1992. This one is the example, the other painting, it's brown hair, brown haircuts, a dark brown and when you put this, this was an installation of the paintings and I was, um, um, Lynette told, I was grow, I grew up in Argentina and my role model was Jorge Luis Borges and he has a story about a guy walking through an uh, obelisk and he started with a white obelisk and he walked, walked from obelisk to obelisk at, at the end it was a purple obelisk and he didn't notice it and the same idea I had with the hairs I wanted to paint for every single hair color a painting and you walk from painting to painting and then don't see the difference. But at the, with the third paint I stopped because it was too much work <laughs> and didn't. And the one, one is from the first is from, from 1991 and the last is from 1993. Yeah, this was you see three one a detail and the same idea I had the idea to use lines again but make more an organic structure like muscles uh, and dealing with rooms and uh, a painting oh god um, Yes, like muscle and uh, the lines of bodies and make a big body uh, completely of rooms and they are all connected together. 
and I used a lot of, yes, rooms. I collected in the same way I collected the haircuts. I started first looking for great architectural examples of great rooms, but it, uh, for my purpose, it was better to look for the everyday single rooms. For example, on the left, you have McDonald's in London. I traced the rooms. You see it on the right, and I made copies. I make with Aquarelle the uh, 3D illusion. And here you, I made the copies, the same like with the hair. And then I made a collage, putting the room side by side. And for my purpose, it was better to use everyday rooms because I uh, put the colors like rainbows. And for me, uh, I can show you here, here, this one. And you can go from, this another example from a boutique, or this is a bookstore, you see it. My, this example. And you can go zoom in to the painting, close, 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 using at the end a magnifying, a lupe, magnifying glass. You always see it sharp. And this is, was, for my opinion, also anti painting because it's not with dots and brush strokes and like this, and um, yeah. And this is um, like a virtual space and like a computer game because you can go from room to room and switch everyone. And this um, uh, later the people told me it's looking like computer games or like computer and similar but um, I have the same age like the people, they um, designed these games and designed the rooms. And I think we have all the uh, same visual needs and the, uh, the same feelings about this stuff. And this is the simi simili similarity and not that I saw the computer games. And uh, another thing is, uh, I was thinking about the Bibliotheque of Babel, of Jorge Luis Borges, and um, uh, about Flatland from Abbott and Abbott. This, this is a story about a Roman about many dimensions, about the two dimension, three dimension, four dimension. It's worth to read it. You have another detail. I'm very fast because it's 260 photographs for you. So, but it's better to see all my development and I don't explain so much because you, I, this is Dinglish, it's not English. Um, I, uh, the same thing with the lines I made inside the room, I made outside and I made a landscape full of lines. And this was in the, in the year 99 or 1998, 98. And it's 141 by 130 inch. And there I used diagrams, diagrams, like I, I show it, you see, like physical, physical construct, uh, optical, uh, physical um, diagrams about gravitation, about a rainbow drop, a water drop is getting into a raindrop. I don't know if you see it there. It's, this is like a ra rainbow. This is a gravitation. This is, a, I don't remember, one construction puts all together the details. So this was all about the lines. I have two ways or s several ways 
and this was about the lines. Now I'm, I'm coming into bubbles, into my bubble line, and uh, uh, here I was in a swimming pool, and you see this are shadow. This is a leaf, and there is a flower, and this is the shadow of the flower, and this is the shadow of the leaf. This is nothing. The red is the broken pool, the so old pool, and this gave me the idea. Finally, to paint something, I always I, I want I first make like every time my uh, aquarels and gouache to study the forms, and then I had the idea to uh, put it together with physical clouds like uh, atomare fusionen atom. I don't know in English, and I uh, uh, painted this are caterpillar. This is a painting from before the rooms. It's 1995 and is 56 by 154 inches. And it's called Caterpillar Raupen. And this is, I have, I bought a book about um, butterflies and caterpillar. And I cut the caterpillar, the uh, head and the feet, and put them on this. Uh, bubbles. And for me it was like looking into a cosmos or looking into the space and me driving the spaceship and uh, looking through a window on a fragment of a world that outside a big all over and you only see a fragment of an endlessness like cosmos. There is no foreground, there is no uh, background, no composition, but the composition is very, you see, I, I'm thinking a lot about composition, but you think it's a part of, it's no center. Uh, someone wrote it's uh, like a Wimmelbild, it's a German uh, swarm build, a uh, painting. Here you have the details. When I paint um, at this time, I'm, uh, it's the 90s, uh, I always take photographs and I have something like a diary where I put my, I collect the ideas for next paintings. And for example, this was the underpainting of the caterpillar painting and yes, yeah, stuff inspirational stuff. There I have something with shadows. There are then another ideas. This was from another painting. I was collecting this stuff. This is another painting dealing with bubbles. This is the a Kraken. It's called in German, it's an octopus painting. And they are floating over a crater of the moon. It's the Copernicus crater. crater. Uh, um, here is, this is the, my bubble way. And this painting, for example, is from 1998. And this is the size, I don't see, uh, it's, yes. This is uh, another example of the book, of the lines and, um, yes. And here you see this guy in his car. And when I saw this on the newspaper and, and together with this, with this photographs, I had the idea for the next painting. And this was a grotto uh, with crystals. And in the crystals are people like uh, the insects in amber. And the people there, these are astronauts and cosmonauts. And the grotto, I invented the grotto, and instead of stalagmite and stalactite, I put these crystals, and the crystals I had from crystal books. Here you have an example. This is an, an, a Apollo. I, I have a collection of NASA films uh, from this time, from TV. I recorded them all, and I made the snap, snapshots. Uh, still, photo still, or the still, I don't know. 
Um, and it was about gra gravity and not gravity and zero gravity and being without a body and floating in the space. And on the other hand, your, the grotto is deep in the earth and um, um, with full gravity and what it was like signals lost in the hole. And um, a lot of people wrote about me, I'm painting like medieval art and this is not true for me. I'm not, pa I'm not a medieval painter. I paint very with thin layers because I wanted with all my paintings until now not, not so much anymore, but on this time very. I wanted my painting paintings to be like a, the, a light from behind, like a screen or like a church when you have the church windows or watching TV. And um, the fascinating, I was fascinated about all this stuff without a room and like our ideas and our rememberings and fragments in our heads are also have the same no room and no body and nothing. And this is the reason I painted like that and not uh, to be like a medieval or paint slowly. I'm always sad I paint so slow. One painting this grotto took uh, nine months to paint. It's not so good, but other painters have hundreds of astronaut paintings. I have only one. It's Yes, but it's cannot. While I painted this uh, big crystal full of astronauts, I had uh, the idea for, uh, by the way, that's me here taking the photographs from the TV. Here you have me, hey. This is me from the time. But when I painted this big crystal, and these are all guys you know, this is uh, Armstrong or American space shuttle and cosmonauts and the, all the women in cosmos I painted. It was Sally, this American, Russian. I, I liked it to paint that. And uh, I had a, a, a painting this, I have an idea for another painting. And this was this, and this is similar to my fire painting. I took a lot of structure like crystals and uh, I painted inside these crystals. I paint people the, which are into uh, artificial light, like in dancing on parties or techno, Berlin or... Um, these are the crystals. These are the details. You see um, DJs in there is John Travolta on Saturday Night Fever. And these, yes, are from different uh, operating, wh when, wherever I get people into uh, artificial light. And it was in, in the, so this, you can see uh, uh, this is a kubus and this is another one, but you can switch them like there is John Travolta. And it was like being outside of the body and yes, sorry. This is um, an installation shot. You see the size of the painting is 70 uh, by 61 inch. This is another grotto. I have, it's my last analog, real analog painting. And this is um, from the year 2000. And the size is 86 uh, by 150 inch. And the idea was to make a new grotto. And uh, because by the other one, I was thinking a lot of intestines. And um, I had the idea to put real tunnel into 
the grotto and I made it blue because it was like the blaue Blume, it's a, a blue flower of German romantic, the symbol, and they deal a lot with crystals and these symbols, and um, it's like water and the ripples. Here you have a mining, uh, a mining tunnel, here you have a subway tunnel, and what I meant with uh, when you throw a stone into water and the stone makes ripples, this is what I, and it was stealing, um, uh, I saw eyes and I made the tunnel which goes very deep into the room, a tunnel, but I made all the lines, it's very two-dimensional. I, it was switching with the dimensions, like every time in my paintings. Here you have it all. Here you have some collage from this time, so you can see it. This is the tun one of the tunnels the trace of the tunnel, you see it looks like a, an eye for me. Here you. So this was my first uh, painting. I got a computer and you see I'm not um, I'm, oh, it's about two um, layers, like the tunnel painting. And the idea here was to deal with violence. I took a screenshot from a Batman movie. Um, and this is artificial violence. I make this a draw, a painting, it's a small one, but I make it, made it big. Uh, I took photos from the internet, violence, real violence. I transformed it very poorly in, at, with the computer and um, I, not, I uh, collected these photographs from internet and I collected almost every picture from NASA. I was a big fan and the idea was to put the stars into the violence photographs. So you have this, but when I painted the painting, I realized if I put the stars like I wanted, it will be a kitsch, you say in German, it's too much. So I left it like this, like very hard stuff. This is also for me a bubble painting, like the caterpillar. Here, this is a guy with a, mach with a machine gun or a Uzi. Uzi. This is me, so you have the size because I knew I will forget always to say you the size of the paintings. This is uh, 97 uh, by 160 and it's from 2001, this painting. Here I got every time more with computer and I got my first digital camera. And here I um, took a screenshot from a computer game. I was very into, I loved it, to play games and be on in the virtual reality of a computer. And I took photos. As I told you, I was fan of NASA and I had a, lo a lot of photographs from a spacecraft which landed on Mars called Pathfinder. And I painted this central perspective here. Uh, I distorted the photograph. So I put, uh, so you think it's very fast landing into the painting straight inside, uh, but um, uh, very forceful into this, but it was a distortion only. And on uh, the crazy, there, there are lumps 
I photographed from the car on, on other cars. And the crazy thing about the spacecraft, when it landed on Mars, it made photographs from its own parachute, not from the Mars. <laughs> and the photos of the parachute was so spooky and so strange, I painted them because it was like from another space and another room and another, um, like the fire, you know, it's another, I don't know the word, Stofflichkeit. Materiality. On there is the parachute. These are the lamps of house of of buildings. Some details. Painting. Here you see how my paintings are in reality. Um, the steps from painting. First the lines, then I could, these are cars from behind the underpainting, and then I tape them and cut the tapes out. These are all the red ones and these are all tape. And then when it's uh, protected, I paint the underground here. And the underground, it's the main station of Düsseldorf. It's the truck 11 of Düsseldorf, and on the floor I painted uh, bed sheets because I, when I painted it, I had a, the idea to put it inside because it looks like night and dreaming and being asleep, but in a, a public room inside. Here you have it almost finished, the underground or the background. Here and then I put the tapes off and I have the cars from behind and the lamps and then I painted the lamps. And um, it's uh, often, I, I show you this one. Um, this is one step from the painting and I could, my gallerist told me make photographs and make paintings from that. It will be great, it's abstract painting, it's wonderful, but for me it's not necessary. I know these structures, perhaps later I will do it. For me more important is the result, and the result is this, what you see. And someone, you paint the paintings and you have an idea you paint this and when the painting is done and you look at it sometime later you realize or you think about what you have done and someone told me yes it's all public rooms and it's about transit rooms and about um, changes, changing the consciousness and um, under consciousness and hurrying uh, through the public spaces, having jet lag and having uh, um, hallucin hallucinations and something like that. And I, I, all my paintings, even the old one and the fire, it for, for me was the fire painting like cosmic fire and so on. It's always dealing with that. Here, this is 2003, I stuck a lot of rooms together with a very central perspective again, but it's like floating. And this part is like uh, from uh, landing on, on Ezeiza, is the airport of Buenos Aires, I called it like this. And these are uh, a lot of airport lobbies, transit rooms, stuck together, one in another. And it's a lo lot of fragments and scraps from photographs from rooms. And while I paint something like the columns and the wet floor or the uh, mirage on the floor, I have always ideas for new paintings. 
or these are the um, lines and uh, there are people, you see, uh, these are people here walking, but I cut them out. And when I paint this, it's like painting an abstract painting, but it's only a detail, detail of all the painting. And when you do this, it's every painter know this, it's like part of you. Well, this is um, 2005 and the size of this painting is 97 by 150 inch. And the name of this painting is Caleta Los Laureles 203. And it's a real address and it's the address of our house in Peru because my family and me, we lived in Peru when I was from two years until six years old. And I had a lot of rememberings about my childhood in this city. We lived in Chimbote. It's a city in the north of Lima and with a seaport. And I have a lot of colorful um, rememberings about this. And when I got there, I realized this uh, town is in a desert, it, I knew, knew this before, but it was very dusty and there was no colors. This, uh, um, Peru is uh, a desert until uh, the Pacific Ocean begins and there is no plants, nothing. And this city, Chimbote, is very no colors, but my remembering was full of colors. And this was crazy. And um, I, um, took a lot of pictures from, I got into squatting position like a child and I took the, the photographs uh, from, this was the street going to my school where I go every day and it was the same. It was 30 years ago, but it was the same, but without colors. So I took the pictures and I put the colors from my rememberings on it. And, and then I painted all this scrap because it was for me like so remembering scraps, this stuff, like, uh, like my feelings about that. This is the house where we lived and I have these rememberings. It's my remembering and um, I took this is also the first painting since this painting until today. I use only my photographs for all my paintings. This is Chimbote, my rememberings as a child. And when I painted it, I didn't remember was it real or I am inventing that it was so colorful. I didn't know it anymore. It's like a déjà vu. After this, uh, Caleta Los Laureles, the last painting was like looking into my past and this is like looking into my future. And I call this name H-G-O-R-O and this H-G-O-R stands for Hector Germán Österheld. And this was a storyboard uh, writer. Um, he wrote El Eternauta, this was a comic story. And it's a guy uh, who is stuck into eternity and traveling to, to, through time. Um, yes. Um, there is all on, on in the sky is in reality a sea and a river, and they are fragments walking and all put together, but um, there are feet and shadows of people walking, like walking into the eternity or something like that. This is R.O. is for Robert Owens. It's a um, house singer. singer. And I, he performed at Café Moscow in Berlin and I took pictures. This is Robert Owens with the microphone. And his face, it's uh, uh, hidden. And this is a girl on the uh, keyboards. 
And this structure is a big fingerprint of mine. And um, yes. This is the painting at Betzel Gallery in New York when we was installing it. This was the year 2006. Here you have um, other examples for paintings of me dealing with vir virtual space and central perspective. This co is called Northern Gate Gugong. And there is a underground station here and this is the underground train. But I don't know if it's so important to know everything. Here you have another example, Don de Cigar, um, Cigars and Pipes from 2006. And this is the lobby of Ezeiza in Argentina, the airport. This, call, this painting is called Barrier. It's uh, similar to Northern Gate Gugong, and it's always the same. It's about um, very strange virtual spaces. Mm. This is in Frankfurt at the Städel Museum. Uh, there I was uh, um, sick, or I don't, um, gelangweilt, buried, buried from the central perspective and some kind of ironical, I put a lot of uh, streets going inside the painting in every perspective, so stop. And this I called here today, gone tomorrow. Here you have the size, it's 81 to 220. Here you have the details, the uh, roads going inside the painting. Here you have another detail. These are all streets. This is in Toronto, but the photograph, this was from my husband, not from me. So this is um, the pre predecessor from uh, your painting here at the museum. This painting is called Brückenstraße, and this is the street, the view from my studio. This is the Brückenstraße here, and this uh, from my studio, I can see on the Brückenstraße was always demonstration, Berlin Marathon, and I always take photographs of this. And on this part, uh, this is this is the um, underground from HGO, my future painting. And the people are all walking inside the painting, you see. And this part are walking to us. Here you have a detail. And um, I put all the people stuck together, like the rooms. And I had at this time the visit of a curator and he told me, oh, it looks like you make a film and you have, when you show the film, you have fra a frame and another frame and another frame and the time you see the film, it, you see the film. And it's my paintings, it's like I could all the frames I put stuck all together without time. You see all at the same time. And in reality, it's a, an idea from the futurists and I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about um, um, uh, only putting all together and um, uh, moving in every direction and uh, the uh, people, it, this is the pedestrian zone in, in Bonn and the people, they are not there anymore. I tell, I tell you later with the new, next painting. This you have details, the, here you have the demonstration. And this, was shown at Petzl in New York in the year 2008. 
And when it was shown, um, I was kind of, for me it was too much color at this time. Now when I see it, I say, yes, great, and the right part is perfect, and the left is perfect with the colors. But at this time I was, wasn't very happy, so I decided to paint this painting again in another colors. And here you have the Brückenstraße again, and at this point, the Brückenstraße is called Heinrich Heine Straße, and there is the entrance of the underground station called U Underground Heinrich Heine Straße, and here you have the 50. So I, I call this painting, this is the reason I call this painting like that. And on the right, it's not Bonn anymore, it's uh, New York, it's the Fifth Avenue, because uh, when they was in, when we were installation installating the uh, the other Brückenstraße painting, I went to the streets and to take new photographs of the people. And um, after Stenik Felix was the curator, which visited me and we spoke about the time put outside of the painting. Um, I was thinking a lot about this, and this was the reason. Uh, all the people you see on the painting, it's 10 years ago, they are not there anymore. They are gone, they are 10 years older. But you upstairs, you see the painting and you see the people like forever. And I was thinking a lot of you paint and you use the best colors and you uh, are always dealing with painting with longevity, longevity a long life putting the expensive scholars and putting um, uh, every painting you know on wood like mine or every painting on canvas, it's going to live 400 and years. But all the people are not living er anymore. They are gone and the time passed and you uh, paint something forever and the people go there and look two seconds at it and go away like the people on the painting, but it's like forever. And this is a w weird situation or thoughts. Here you have another detail of the demonstration. Here to have the comparison with the other painting. Here you have the um, my, the real Heinrich Heine Straße, the photograph. This is on the left, my studio. Yeah. Doesn't work. This is my studio where I painted the painting. Here you have the detail on the Fifth Avenue with all the ghost people and the people, they are not there anymore. And you see this guy here, it's a friend of mine. I put it, him here, but in reality I wanted to take the photograph of the pedestrians. And Nobody likes to be photographed by a stranger, so I will say, hey, I make photo of you, but in reality I wanted to take the other people. <laughs> so uh, I had a lot of photos. So, and then I put them together and I have it for my painting. And here you see they have no faces. There is another reason. 
Um, in, in German, it's very with the personal rights of the people. Perhaps they don't want to be in a painting or in a photograph. So I don't paint the faces or I put the face of my sister inside. And or something like that. I grew up in Argentina. After Peru, my family went to Argentina. And then I always try to paint a flag. This is the colors of Argentina. Here you have the painting. There are a lot of details. This is uh, from the year before. Uh, it's 2008 and this is a, a water f waterfalls. Uh, this I collected from the internet and it's like a stage with water and uh, again my way inside the painting. For me it's like um, under consciousness again and water flowing and yes, uh, it looks like uh, ghosts. Uh, this waterfall looks like the ghost, uh, this white uh, bed sheets. This painting is from um, 2010 and I put mainly, the name is uh, DFV CDG and DFV is Dallas for Dallas Fort Worth and CDG is Charles de Gaulle. On the left you have Dallas Fort Worth upside down. These are the people. They are hanging. And this is uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport. Uh, a lot of different photographs put together. And um, it's like when you are dreaming and all the rooms are going uh, durcheinander put yes, fragments and um, yes, like fa falling into, when you fall into sleep, you are falling the same. Here you have details. I have to hurry up. People hanging. Here you have a detail. This is the next painting. Um, um, this is, was shown at the Frist Museum in Nashville and there is, a, for, um, in casualty, I found a, a video. Uh, there was a guy, Lutz Köpnik, talking about the painting, so I don't, don't need to explain so much. Uh, I can tell you, painting this painting was for me like writing a big novel because it's so large, it's 200 and 84 inch long and it took all a year but nobody knows. The last painting here you have the, this is Charles de Gaulle, the same from the other and there are the guy, hanging guys from the other painting and there I had the idea you can turn the same painting around like if you play cards, the king and the queen, you can turn them completely around and, and it's the same. And when I painted, this is installing the painting at Petzl in New York. And um, when I paint, paint this painting, I was feeling like writing a novel or I, on the other way um, a lot of people told me wow are you crazy you paint all a year on a painting and I asked me what a, a, a novelist writes one year a novel and no one is saying nothing and uh, if I paint a painting everyone wants me to be fast why is that because the work is the same um, here you have an uh, example from Turnaround. Here you see clearly it's an underpass. This is the street, it's the underpass, uh, the ceiling of a bri uh, the bridge, and, from, and this is where the pedestrians go. 
On the painting it looked like that, but you can turn it around. Or oh, here you have another example. This is uh, right in this way, in reality. But I painted it all, uh, the paintings are too heavy, the canvas are too heavy to make them around. And I told you I've, I was feeling write a novel, uh, writing a novel and I was thinking a lot about um, Cervantes, Quixote de la Mancha or at One Thousand and One Nights where you have the big novel and they are always telling your stories and they go like bubbles inside the main uh, uh, what you are telling. In Thousand and One na Night you have Sherezade and you have one story and the next and next and for me they are like holes and these are the shapes of, of people on the painting and this is like a hole and you see to, through Paris. I use all photographs of Paris. This is uh, another guy to an, a woman and a man and inside the bodies you can look in through Paris or here the same. It's like a story in a story in a story and I felt like this. This is another one called uh, Ukbar. It's a homage again to Jorge Luis Borges. Ukbar is a city, a, a state. It doesn't exist like a Fata Morgana or a Mirage. I'm looking, uh, the time is gone, so I, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, this is my studio again. This, ah yes, this is important. When I painted this, um, I painted these columns and I was very hap happy with the columns, but before I have taped a face and I painted the columns over the taped face, so I have to put the tapes away and destroy the column and I was very sad. This was um, after I put the stuff away, this, there is a woman, you see the face and she has a scarf. And there is another face and another woman, the hands. And there is another woman from behind. There is another one. I stuck a lot of people again together. Sorry. And this, you have more, but watch the columns. I was so frustrated destroying my columns, I painted this painting. And this is, uh, in reality, these are not columns. This is the entrance. Uh, there are columns, but they are squared. And it's the entrance of the Ludwig Museum in Köln, in Cologne. And people, pedestrians in front of the museum. And all this stuff. In, in reality, I wanted to paint the columns one, two, and three, like a, like a déjà vu, again, again, again. And here it's full of flags of Argentina. Yes. Bush Rising as German, but I'm, I, I was born in Germany. I'm German, but I feel more South American. Here you can put a line, and these two parts are, it's like a mirage, it's Spiegelung, miraging. You don't see it, but I like it because I want to work more with uh, miraging. So you have, the time is gone and this, you have the real size. It's again very large, 281 feet long. I painted one year, it's normal. Now you have a detail, a woman, abstract part, process of painting, more process of painting. Yeah, here I was very proud painting the shirt of the woman because you have this spiral and this spiral all over the painting. Yes. Some drawings from this time with the tunnels, but all put together. Yes, there is an example of the collection of my photographs. I 
This is uh, only a few. I have 900, more than 900,000 photographs in my computer because everywhere I'm, I am, I am taking pictures. Today the same. And on here you have, yes, here this is Pali de Tokyo. And, but you see here, I'm collecting like, this is Philippe Areno at Pali de Tokyo. It's the same day. It's very easy to make so much photos and I'm collecting light because my newest paintings are all dealing only with light. And this was the first one and it's called Calafate. It's the airport of Calafate in Patagonia. But the time is, I see the watch there. So this is another one. And these are two rooms, three rooms, and this is like a hole again. It's called Oberbaum uh, because of the Oberbaum Bridge in Berlin. And you have here is the detail. You see the Oberbaum Bridge. People from Berlin see it immediately. Here you have these holes I showed you with a very large bibliotheque uh, painting, but more uh, elaborated. Another detail. Yes, the time is, I see it. Here I made, a, a, this is the same airport Calafate like the other painting, but I make with a brush at the computer a very big hole. And in this hole I put a sky and all upside down again and a rainbow and a white ghost people again. Here is a show, it was by Petzl in New York in 2015, the show. Yes, another one, this is a building and a car from there. It's called, it's a small one, is this one painting here. And it's uh, dealing with the waterfall painting. This is from uh, last year. Castor and without title. And these are, anyway, they are very new and I don't know about, a lot about them to tell you because it's, when it's so close to me, it's, I don't understand my paintings. Uh, here I see something like the parachute I, uh, I showed you with the Pathfinder spacecraft. Uh, for me, it's rep there are two people here sitting, but when I paint this, I remember old paintings. It's another detail, like snow, and this is the hanging guy. Since I painted him the first time, I painted in, in every painting of me. In every I showed you, you haven't seen it, him, but he was there in every one. And this was, this was the last one, is this painting. And this is again, is, is from this year in January, I finished it. And there again are full of people. There is a guy, there is a guy everywhere. And there is the hanging guy, but it's like snow and like another dimension. I don't know what it is. I painted it. I'm happy with this and I'm on this and with big eraser, the very one. And this was at König Gallery my show on January, so you see the dimensions. So this was it, it's the opening. This is me, I don't want to watch my paintings here in the middle. <laughs> yes, and this is the final. Yes, and I'm 10 minutes late. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Corinne, um, for that excellent uh, introduction to your work and a wonderful overview. And I feel like we're perfectly primed now. If you have not seen a Corinne Vasmuth's painting in our Level 1 Contemporary Gallery, I invite you to do so now. Uh, the gallery is open until 8 p.m., so you have plenty of time to take a close look um, now that we've 
uh, seen so much and heard so much about Corinne's practice. Um, and I would also encourage you uh, to take a look while you're there um, at the work of Cameron Rowland and invite you to come back here, same time, same place, next Wednesday, 6 p.m., uh, to hear Cameron Rowland speak uh, about his work, which is also featured in the Contemporary Gallery. So thank you all for coming, and thank you again, Corinne, uh, for uh, your talk, and your English is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>